Okay, what is up? Been working on this just a little more this evening after work. And today what I did was I went ahead and mounted up the two thermistors, outdoor air and the coil temperature sensor. Did the voltage dividers, feed them in there. Got some caps just to kind of stabilize it if we get any interference, hopefully it does, but kind of done the same thing like when I had my homemade water heater controller up there. So um, right now I have this that out in the air and I have the, my uh, outdoor coil thermistor kind of zip tied thermometer right there. The one heats up faster than the other, but I've had it within a degree pretty much, especially when I put it in water. But when I take it out, you know, it's wet, I have to kind of dry it off because uh, this probe will like drop down to like 50, even though it's like almost 70 in here just because of the evaporation effect. So give that a few seconds in the water to kind of go up. And then the outdoor air temperature one I just have here. I just used the same formula on it. 10K MPC. Should be about right. And that's going up. I'll give that a second. Now let's show you kind of the wicked math. So basically, uh, I was looking up the Stein, Hart, whatever equations, all this crazy stuff, interpolation, it's all going to be complicated, like I'd have to spend like days probably just learning how to do all that, so, you know, just to do it once now and probably not do it again for another five years, that's the story of my life with all this kind of stuff, so I like I do the same thing every day, it's just like learning a little bit of Excel, I made some Excel spreadsheets for my own purpose a couple times, but I don't do it regularly, so then I forget how to do it. So I was going to look it up or watch a YouTube video or something. So I've done this kind of before, but basically once I get it hooked up, uh, I usually just have this raw 8-bit analog digital converter and get the raw number in, and uh, display it at first just to see what it is. And then I kind of heated up some water, watched it, you know, plotted the temperature slowly, and I kind of just plot them at certain points to get some points. And then that way I could kind of see, and, and then... Uh, you know, and one thing I'll do is like I write down the temperature versus the analog digital count, zero to 255 for the analog digital count for 8 bit. You know, I kind of see the difference in what the error is, you know. So 33 degrees, you know, it was like 27. This is from the count to the actual temperature in Fahrenheit, 32, 36. It gets large, it gets all the way up to, you know, like 80 something by the time I get around 200 degrees, way beyond any readings I'm going to be using. <laughs> so, uh, And sometimes I gotta stir this in the water. But when I've stirred this in the water, I've had, these have been pretty much within a degree. It says 95, and that's about to hit 95. So I've been within a degree or so, had a pretty broad range, yeah, maybe two degrees at the most. But I don't know, it's been pretty good. So they're pretty much reading the same thing. I don't have this, um, you know, down to a fraction or anything. I don't need to, so I didn't. So I plotted that, and then what I do is some math. And um, using the air, I kind of noticed that, you know, because this is not a linear um, slope, it's like a weird curve, but in the range that I'm reading by the way it worked with my voltage divider, I noticed that it pretty much just increased more and more of an error as you get in the upper temperature, temperatures from ADC count to the... Um, temperature that I'm calling Fahrenheit and I could use that to my advantage that that was kind of consistent more and more of a of an error you know where like I said it was 27 you know here and then up here you know it's like 80 so <laughs> I did some freaking voodoo math so analog digital count divide that by two so and I kind of found like some sweet spots divided by two and then minus like five, and then took that value, added 32 to it, and then divide by 100. And by the way, you can't work with decimal points in the microprocessor. So this, in my first calculations, was times 0.3, and then I moved on to the rest of the equation. But once you put it in the processor, you have to shift it over. So I say times 32 instead of 3.2, for example, and then divide by 100 to bring the value back down to normal so that gave me a value and it's basically an as the temperature goes up 
it's giving me more of a more of a error count <laughs> and then I just take and that's my error count and then I'm adding it plus this calculation which was the ADC count divided by 2 to minus 5 I just use the same thing and it comes out it works and I shoved that freaking equation into this whore for both thermistors like that and it's working so 92.6 93 degrees so it's awesome that should be good um, depending on how different different NTC thermistors are I mean I might be able to continue to use that formula in a lot of my other projects so it's basically working from 30 degrees up to around 200 well way above what I need and once I did the, the math again I actually didn't retest it but I that high I guess tested it up to like 120 130 130 I think which is mostly the highest I'm gonna read the outdoor uh, call temperature sensor unless something's wrong and after that it doesn't matter if it's accurate or not basically um, it'll if it starts drifting up it'll be well beyond the normal design range already have caused a trip or whatever program in so that's where I'm at now is um, maybe have to figure out some safeties and stuff so after I got done with this yesterday, I was like, oh shit, you know, I, I ran out of inputs and getting so many out, enough outputs to work and every pin's used up. How am I going to implement my high pressure, low pressure switch now? Like, oh hell. So uh, I could probably do some voodoo with that, um, like maybe with my button inputs to where um, what I'm thinking I'll do is hook them up to here and I'm going to convert, these are being uh, binary inputs right now, digital inputs, and I'm going to switch them to analog inputs. And if I switch those to analog inputs, I can monitor that, because um, basically I'm not pushing the button, it's just held down to zero volts. But if I can, if I run those low pressure, high pressure switches through a little resistor divider network, <laughs> this, these, I can make two of these be the inputs, one for each. And basically, um, it won't be at zero volts. It won't be at five volts all the time. It will be like, you know, say at two volts or something. You should be able to still use those inputs for button interfaces because then if you get like, you know, a higher threshold, like when I close the button and goes full five volts, then it's going to all interpret it as a button press. And I think I could do that. So sometimes you just got to come up with some crazy stuff like that to get around limitations. You know, and like I said, I'm used to the chip. I got all these other um, processors, you know. Got plenty of pins on that 40 pin there, but just never really implemented, and they're huge, you know. I started getting into the surface mount ones, but now my eyes are kind of shite, so I'm like wearing these and wearing that just to solder and whatnot. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I need to, now I've just got to do some logic. I need to add that interface for the buttons and pressure switches. And this board's going to start probably turning ugly. I got most of everything that needs to be soldered on here, soldered on here so far, I think. Um, except for this, the output for the pulse width modulation. But once I get this working, I need to make a second one. Because I need to have two anyway. And hopefully the other one, you know, because I'm doing it again, will look nicer. Either that, I gotta get off my ass and try to design this on some sort of CAD or something and have them made. But I don't know. I'll probably just use these breadboards since I put so much effort into them. Okay, I'm getting ready to call it for a night. Took me a little bit, but I had to rearrange some inputs and outputs here and converted these two buttons to analog inputs. So uh, I'm just showing my 8 bit count for the button two and button three right there and then low pressure and high pressure is just a two state zero one when it meets a threshold of a button press it's just going to jump into another subroutine so normally you're not pushing any buttons and then when this uh these low pressure high pressure loops are closed so i'm going to go to low pressure in there see the counts like uh voltage divider so when that continuity is closed, it brings it up across the threshold that satisfies that the low pressure switch is closed. But it will not 
uh, have enough analog counts, you know, to uh, register as a button press. So I push the button, it goes to 255. So in my subroutine, I'll look for that higher threshold to, you know, be a button press. And really, when I use the plus minus buttons, it's going to be when I hit the mode button and went to another subroutine anyway. So that won't interfere with the low pressure, high pressure operation. And then over here, this one's the high pressure loop. Get that on there. There we go. See the HP one. And plug it, plug it in. And same thing. If I push the button, it goes to the max five volts, two fifty five counts, and it's at that count, which is like halfway, right? Ten two ten k resistors, basically in series. The ten k pull down resistors already had on the buttons to hold them grounded, and now five k um, going through the low pressure high pressure switch to the five volts positive. So now I'll be able to implement while it's running a low pressure high pressure cutout. So pretty much everything is, I think everything's pretty much as far as hardware goes, except for just the uh, output for the um, pulse width modulation for the fan control. So almost everything now is going to be just some software. And I'm going to start just tailoring that. So, But this does it for the night. And it's pretty cool. Got the temperatures and everything. And that will all be showing meaningful stuff you know the end product i always keep changing what that displays as i'm working on circuitry to uh just see what my values are um with certain little better hardware than i have you can do like debugging and stuff but even still it's to see what it's really doing you know it's just i just turn it on and watch my outputs with the scope or you know variables with the uh, liquid crystal it seems to work pretty good for me so that, catch you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. Late.